So if you're going to build an AM transmitter or maybe a transmitter for digital modes, you need a solid, reliable VFO and uh, you also need to be able to sequence the uh, transmit and receive functions. So this module will go into an AM transmitter. Let's power up. The displays cycle through a segment test routine and then they come to rest with the VFO frequency on the left and a clock in whatever time you set it to on the right. Now this VFO does two bands so by pushing that button we can cycle through VFO settings on 160 and 80. Now if I just toggle this little switch here the VFO goes into transmit mode. So the signal is uh, 1.865, the square wave output, and the, uh, the clock is replaced by an overtimer which reverts to a temperature display. The temperature sensor is here and that will be attached to the power amplifier's heatsink. So release the transmit, let's do that on 80, transmit, now we've got 3686. So the overtimer just tells you how many seconds have elapsed since you hit the push to talk button. Um, there's no particular reason to do that other than just to put that display to a interesting and novel use. There are some other features, one of them you've just heard, that's um, a K or a over beep at the end of a transmission cycle. If you have a really long over, and I think this next timer is set at uh, 60 seconds, the controller will sound a CW ident. So that's just sounding to a piezo buzzer, but the same um, CW and um, overbeep tones uh, run through an RC filter and a trim pot so they can be taken to the input of the modulator. The VFO controller module is really just an amalgam of um, commonly available components. So the displays are 0.56 inch seven segment LED displays. The microcontroller is an Arduino Nano. The uh, VFO or the clock is an SI5351. This little board here is an MCP9808, that's the temperature sensor. That's a piezo buzzer that's making the little CW signals. This is a real-time clock module. And then these two, these two decks here, the bottom one just has some switching on it, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Uh, some sequencing for um, TR relay band and, um, and, and the modulator enable lines. And uh, the top board is a is a clock buffer or the VFO buffer and uh, squarer. So the signal coming off the SI5351 clock is a volt or volt, volt and a half. It goes through a discrete amplifier, an attenuator, and then a 74HCO4, which squares it up. So let's have a look at those LEDs, which are on the control lines. When I go to transmit, the big red one will control the transmit receive relay and this green one here will uh, enable the pulse width modulator which will bring on carrier or bring on drive. So they're under software control so they can be sequenced in uh, each direction from receive to transmit and from transmit to receive. Because this is a controller for a two band rig, the middle LED will pull in relays to um, switch to an alternate 
set of uh, low pass filters for um, 80 meters. There's a couple of other features. If the controller has been left idle for a period, I think it's set to about 10 seconds at the moment, the display will dim. But just so that you don't think the whole thing has gone to sleep, when the controller is idle, it'll give a little pulse of increased intensity about every 10 or 15 seconds. Again, that does kind of nothing other than just something I wanted to try out. Just a little heartbeat to, to remind you, but as soon as you touch a control, it'll come to life. 